Okay, and welcome back to this little mini-series and uh, our next uh, segment here, we are going to start working proper with uh, our first um, data mining tool, uh, our first flexible data-driven uh, machine learning approach, which is known as MARS, Multivariate Adaptive Regression Splines. Um, I'm only going to cover a few uh, bits of the area of Mars in the interest of time. If you're interested in learning more about Mars, we have lengthier sessions and recorded sessions. I also routinely go to GSM conference, the Joint Statistical Meetings, once a year and give uh, two-hour presentations on Cart Mars, uh, Three Net Random Forest, things like that. So let's just have a quick highlights and see how it works. So the main purpose of Mars is to relax the assumption of linearity of the response surface of the multiple linear regression. So instead of building one global multiple linear regression in Mars, there's an automated way to search for the partition of the underlying data space into localized regions such that within each region a different multiple re linear regression is being fit and then they are all linked together such that the resulting response surface is uh, continuous. Not necessarily smooth everywhere because there will always be the boundary points but at least continuous so that it, you're not introducing any specific gaps. So let me highlight in general how it works. So there's uh, this little slide here uh, that introduces the concept of spline. So let me uh, just do this highlighter here. So we have uh, a spline uh, which is the underlying machinery for Mars methodology. And there are two different types of splines. The interpolating splines when, uh, uh, that are used in some uh, areas of research. We're not going to be interested in those. And the smoothing splines where the curve needs to be close to data, not necessarily passing through every data point. And the typical procedure would be divide the range of values into separate regions. And the boundary where one region ends and another region starts will be called not. Now here is a quick illustration of why this is useful. I took Boston Housing data set that we are working with and I took the target variable MV, house values here, and uh, only one predictor L stat for the simplicity of use, which is uh, percent low social economic status or percent of poor people living in the neighborhood. Uh, now if when we work, were working with linear regression, we would simply fit a straight line descending in this case, or try to guess the nature of the transformation and perhaps fit an inverse function, but we would still fit a global model. Now, what smoothing splines allow us to do is basically we say, okay, what if we partition our range of LSTAT into several different distinct areas? So we have all of these data points here, uh, all of these data points here, and then you also have this region here and that region here. And then we say within each region, let's fit individual linear regression and then also make sure that they are connected uh, at the boundary points. Well, if you were somehow to identify the location and placement of those region boundaries, these things called knots that are pointed out here, if you were to know these knots, it's very easy and straightforward to fit the underlying uh, collection of regressions and uh, at, at this point we would have gotten the solution that has all of the nice compromise and balance between being local and also expressing the general features. Well, what Mars methodology is doing for you without uh, going deep into Mars theory, which has a very solid foundation underneath in statistics and probability, what Mars does, it finds these locations of knots for you automatically. So you don't have to worry about trying all of those different things by hand, and you don't even have to worry about identifying which variables to look at, because Mars will do the search 
coverage for you and it will fit all those straight lines and it will also ensure that the continuity uh, requirement here and this is the beauty of Mars method so not only do you don't have to introduce transformations on your own Mars will find those transformations for you while at the same time you'll still be within the confines of the conventional uh, statistical theory so you can do all of the uh, remaining things uh, unchanged okay here is an illustration how this can be done now when I say Mars finds knots automatically here is what I mean suppose we have a very simple relationship here a flat top function so you have two true knots one here and one here so there is uh, no dependency between the response and x between those knots there is a positive uh, relation here and a negative relation there now here is the actual uh, data set so this is the data set that we drew from that idealistic underlying model so these are the real data so the points have some added random noise in here now imagine that I needed to find a single knot for this data set suppose I pick this point here then I could fit one straight line on the left another straight line that has the best fit to all the points on the right and the resulting uh, uh, a model would have had some kind of sum of squared errors right now on the other hand I could pick any point from the points that are available to me if I pick a point here then I can obviously fit one straight line on the left another straight line on the right I also need to ensure that they are connected here the continuity assumption and that would have given me another sum of squared errors and I am visually it's clear that this sum of squared errors will be smaller than the original sum of squared errors for the poor choice of a data point. Now it's easy to guess that you can actually check every available data value to come to conclusion that the very first knot should be placed here somewhere in the middle in order to minimize the resulting sum of squared errors of this fit. Once the first knot is found, you can repeat the same search again to find the second knot, then to find the third knot, the fourth knot, and so on and so forth. Each time you're looking at all available data points and you're trying to add yet another transformation point while keeping the concept of continuity. The end result is you have a nice uh, practical discovery of the true underlying flat shape. Now there are some additional uh, little technicalities here because you are doing this sequential search some of the knots may become redundant so at some point you may want to do a, a cleanup stage where knots are removed one at a time so that only the ones that are important are preserved. I cover all of those different individual concepts in our training videos, training sessions and JSM presentations but the underlying key idea is very straightforward automated search for knots. Now how can this be done in analytical terms, in terms of uh, computations, uh, in terms of uh, programming? Easy. You just introduce the concept of basis function. The basis function has this direct interpretation as a max of 0 and x minus c or mirror which is uh, c minus x, the flipped version. And again the details we, we talked about extensively in our Mars classes. Now the basis function either direct or mirror operates on a part of the original space so for example if you set C to 30 so this part here is 30 whenever x is above 30 you have a 45 degree line whenever x is below 30 you have essentially a disappearance so the function returns zero so any basis function is essentially a transformation of the original variable x into a new function g of x where the g is controlled by the parameter c and the c can be taken explicitly from the data set and we can try every available point to vary c such that we cover all of the different available knots so therefore from this previous slide where we introduced a geometric concept of knot to this slide where we have analytical representation there is a one-to-one -one correspondence and once you have that it's very easy to set up the Mars algorithm it will be three main stages but the forward stage being the most important one. In the forward stage you add pairs of basis functions 
slash knots in a stepwise regression manner such that eventually you rediscover all of the potential knots out there. Then you have a backward stage where knots are, or basis functions are removed one at a time such that you're cleaning up all of the redundancies that may have been, been introduced due to the sequential nature of the process. And then you also have a model selection stage where based on either some kind of generalized cross-validation or independent test sample performance you select optimal model. Again, uh, all of the specifics uh, we discuss in our modest training, uh, for now, I just want to show you what happens uh, in, uh, in the real software here. Okay, so let's see. This is the model, the linear regression model that we built so far, and uh, everything worked fine here. Uh, let's just keep that model for our reference because we want to know, well, first of all, as far as the summary uh, goes uh, for that specific model, uh, you know that the R squared here is basically about 74%. There's also a concept of adjusted R squared that we sometimes use in statistics. It's very close to 74% just because the data set has 506 records and when you have that many records all of these fine adjustments they usually produce uh, very little effect. Uh, now, but that's the linear regression. Now let's see what happens when I unleash the power of Mars. So for that I just declare these variables as allowed to be transformed and under options and limits I will specify up to 40 individual basis function steps And now when I click start, it quickly went ahead and analyzed everything in uh, my data set. And as you can see, the very first thing that is striking is that now the R squared measure uh, went up to 88%. From 74% to 88%, that's the improvement of 14 points on the R squared scale, which is, uh, this is a pretty substantial imp improvement, as you can see. Uh, now, how one can interpret this model here? You, again, you click on the summary button, and uh, when you look at the summary here, uh, the most important thing is the basis functions code where if you look at it you'll see that individual variables LSTAT, RM, etc, etc, etc were transformed into basis functions, the basis functions that I quickly briefly described on the set of slides and once I have these basis functions now the rest of the equation is still a classical linear regression so there is really Mars has done for you, what Mars has done for you is no different than you normally do by hand when you take the original predictors, create transformed versions, say log, inverse, so some other type of transformation, piecewise linear or bind version. So you cre first create transformed variables and then you fit multiple linear regression in the set of transformed variables. So there's no difference there. But the key advantage is that Mars has found all of those transformations for you. You did not have to find those or to try those because all of these were picked for you automatically by doing uh, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands potential multiple linear regression, uh, re regressions under the hood, uh, hood here. So now, uh, once you have these transforms, you don't have to try to understand exactly what the transforms mean. If you click on the plots button, uh, tab here and look at the show all, what you will see is that Mars has already plotted all of these transformations for you. So now you can see that LSTAT, and it's, it's instructive to, look, to compare it against uh, uh, what we had uh, previously. In the linear regression conventional sense, LSTAT and RM were just linear global patterns. Well, it turns out that Mars suggested that LSTAT should be curved a little bit 
and more importantly Rm is more like a step function as opposed to the overall linear functions. So the Rm only influences our predictions when it changes between six and a half, seven and a half, and outside of that tiny little area of significant impact, there is really no dependency or no contribution. The same thing goes with distance to employment centers, crime rate, and so on. So as you can see, Mars really identified all of these nonlinear transformations and uh, it's done it automatically for you. Now, as far as uh, your uh, statistical endeavors, if you just look at the classic output here, I had my first run, which is a multiple linear regression, and when you look at, uh, uh, there is this, uh, all of these different parts of the classic output, and in particular you'll find this part known as Mars regression on training data. What you will see here is that the original regression reported all individual variables with uh, pretty much zero p-values. But when you look at the Mars 2, and again Mars regression on training data, I have an extended set of basis functions here where each basis function uh, contributes only on a par portion of the original variable. And notice, due to the power of Mars search, all of these p-values remain highly significant. So all of these uh, contributions were identified as being very important. So what have we learned from here? We see that uh, by simply running a Mars application, uh, you can build automatically a collection of localized linear regressions uh, such that the boundaries between different parts of the space are automatically discovered for you, thus relieving all of that heavy-duty grunt work trying to identify the boundaries of those regions on your own. Now, where is that important? Well, number one is interpretation. When you see that the actual variable contributes differently in different areas of the space, you can gain a lot of localized insights into the essence of your data and what's going on inside of your data. You're no longer constrained to fit all of the responses as a global linear patterns. You no longer need to search or trial and error for all of the individual transformations of your variables. That's enormous time saver. Now, when I ran this Mars model on this data set, the original problem was posed as the challenge uh, to conventional statisticians to build the proper regression model. And it took some people months and months of work trying to hunt down all of those individual transformations. Mars accomplished it for us in an instant. In less than a minute, we managed to improve R squared by 14 points from 74% up to 88%, and we nailed all of the key transformations and all of the important parts of the underlying relationships. Of course, it doesn't mean that we found the truth. There is no such thing out there because of all of the confounders and mutual dependencies and so on and so forth. But as far as the prediction goes, we've advanced so much further because we have a model that is a lot more uh, powerful and accurate. And when you look at the, the responses, you can also see exactly the suggested nature of transformations and things like that. And that is the power of Mars. Again, if you're interested in learning about Mars more, we have a lot of materials on that interesting and uh, very powerful product. From In the next video, I'm going to detach from Mars and we're going to explore the wonderful world of trees and tree-based approaches.